academia is a big part of SOLIDWORKS community. Over two million students and educators big. At SOLIDWORKS, from day one, we have been passionate about helping students. There's one person who's been guiding us in our mission. Uh, she, she's been a strong advocate for women in engineering, her, a teacher herself, and as Barry Pettis yesterday said, we just have too many dudes here. So let's have our Director of Education, Murray Planchard. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you. I use the group leaders. Yesterday, Bree was right. I'm looking out. I'm going to skip these two rows right here. I'm looking out pretty much everywhere. And there's a lot of dudes. I'm OK with that. But Bree also said, we can make a difference. We can make a major change. Now, he was not my setup guy yesterday for this presentation on engineering girls. I didn't rush to change any slides. I've had conversations over the past couple of days, one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, with users. Frank, who talked to me about his daughter. Jack, who talked to me about his ladies' day. We have a community that can make a difference. And last year, I had one of those conversations with Saul Diamond. Saul is a professor at Dartmouth. And in the past, we talked about certification for his students, his research in brain imaging, an innovative freshman engineering class, his two students after a product design course, taking an idea, starting a company. Dartmouth has 27% women in their undergraduate engineering program. And Saul asked me, last year in San Diego at SolidWorks World, we sat down face to face, and he said, where are the women engineers? And I looked around, just as I'm looking around today, and Saul was right. Less than 5% of the engineering attendees were women. Engineers solve problems. We need more engineers in this world to solve more problems that are complex with diverse backgrounds and different perspectives. As a mechanical engineer, I know that women have a different perspective than men. I also know that at SolidWorks, we listen to our customers. So after San Diego, we went back, got in a room, and the community team, we started to think, and we came up with the Women in Engineering Recognition Program. This program recognizes a woman who's been outstanding in her field or the community. It has featured students, researchers, product designers, CEOs. With us today is a recipient. She has been a former user group leader, one user group of the year award, a first robotics mentor, and is now a support engineer for Fisher Unitech. Please join me in congratulating Rachel York. Rachel? Yeah, you got to stand up, Rachel. She's used to supporting all you guys, right? You can nominate a woman to be recognized for their innovation and achievements in the SolidWorks community by going to solidworks.com slash women in education. We also looked this year for organizations that advocate engineering, education, and women in engineering. And what a find. We started a collaboration and partnership with the FAB Foundation. The FAB Foundation is responsible for FAB Labs and FAB Academies all over the world. FAB Labs are dedicated to provide people the ability to produce a prototype, digital advanced manufacturing with laser cutters, CNC machines, plasma cutters, electronic workbench, and 3D printers. The foundation helps people develop their ideas into actual products. 
for people that necessarily wouldn't have access. It's not like you that can walk into your local you know, company machine shop. These are in community settings, helping their communities grow. Fab Labs also supports women of all ages, from little girls in Cleveland that design and print their first prototype, to teenage girls in Nairobi that design and build robots, to women in Pabal, India, designers that have been given an opportunity to become business leaders in their community with financial independence and entrepreneurship. This is a network that we want to be part of, and Fab Labs promotes women themselves in these businesses, where over 28% of women are the business leaders and owners of Fab Labs. Miki in Japan, Anna in Mexico, Charlotte in the Netherlands, Sarah in the United States. With us today is the director of the Fab Lab, Sherry Lassiter. Sherry is responsible for developing the Fab Lab network, its entrepreneurship, and new learning methods. I invite you, especially you guys, I just want to remind you, it's Valentine's Day soon, okay? And at the Fab Lab, the interactive partner pavilion, you can produce a little heart for your loved one back home to say, especially if they're in Boston with five feet of snow, honey, I brought you this from SolidWorks World. But please visit Sherry in the Fab Labs in the partner pavilion. Thank you for being here, Sherry. Also in the partner pavilion are the University of Arizona and Arizona State University EcoCar Team Baja Team Design Bill Fly. These are great students from great schools and I invite you to take a look at these competitive teams that have such a passion for SolidWorks. In fact, SolidWorks sponsors over 2,300 student teams around the world. That's a really big number. But one of the organizations that I love, that I go to, that I work right with those robots and dive right in is First Robotics. First Robotics is doing everything they can to encourage young women into the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math, those STEM fields that are so critical. Some of my favorites I featured here, the Pittsburgh Girls of Steel, Ontario SWAT, and Northern California Girl Scout Space Cookies. These women are changing the attitude of their community about girls participating in engineering, not just to know the control system and the mechanical system and to, and to design in SolidWorks, but the team skills, the that teamwork, the problem solving, the communication, everything you need to be here, to be here and to be successful. We'd love to share your stories our resellers, Cadmas I'm thinking about, our partners, Microsoft, our customers. You help out these teams, these girls, you're their mentors, your role models. Robots, cars, planes, they just get you excited about being an engineer. When I was a little girl, I used to build model airplanes with my dad. And then we would assemble uh, racetracks in all these cool configurations to race slot cars as fast as we can so they would jump over the track into the dog's water dish. <sighs> right? You had those experiences. The toys that you played with may have determined why you're sitting here today. You may have seen our next guest on ABC TV Shark Tank. It's on at 9 p.m. on Friday nights. She is changing what girls think about their toys. <laughs> Hi, Bettina. Welcome to SolidWorks World. I know you had a tough time getting here. You're on crutches. What happened this weekend? <laughs> um, I had a Frisbee tournament on Saturday, so I sprained my ankle. <laughs> OK, well, no more ultimate Frisbee <laughs> for you, but I'm really glad you made it. Uh, some of the people in our audience may not be familiar with the show. Can you tell us what happened at the end of Shark Tank? Yeah, so we're working with Mark Cuban, and it's been a really great experience so far. 
That's terrific. I know I watched the end of the video. Mark Cuban asked you a question. Um, he has two young girls, and he asked you if you would mentor his children, his girls. How did you get interested in engineering? Yeah, so for me, it was really experiences I, ha I had when I was younger. Um, I played with my brothers, hand me down building toys like Lego and Lincoln Logs. And I would just spend hours building these really elaborate creations. I would make huge cities. I would build a lot of spaceships in the cities. Um, but it was really those experiences of just building with my hands and kind of figuring things out in my imagination that was really developing a lot of skills and getting me really excited about engineering. Where did you meet your co-founder, Alice? It's in the video. Yeah, so Alice and I, we met in grad school at Stanford. Um, Alice had come from MIT st and studied mechanical engineering, and I came from Caltech and studied electrical engineering. And for both of us, we were actually pretty surprised by the drop-off of women from undergrad to grad school. And that really got us talking about what got us into engineering, and that's where we found this common experience of toys. So we have this, uh, these two friends, one a mechanical engineer from MIT, another an electrical engineer to get, uh, to, from Caltech. You get together at Stanford. Where did you come up with the idea for Ruminate? Well, we tested with a lot of girls. <laughs> we went into a lot of homes. We would bring in prototypes, um, a lot of different ideas. We found a lot of ideas that didn't work. Uh, kids were pretty straightforward about telling us things we didn't like, uh, which was, so it was great working with them. But eventually we came up with the idea of Ruminate as really a great way of getting girls to build but also play with circuits in a way that really made sense for them. And how can you explain to, to our audience what girls can create with Ruminate? Because it's more than just a dollhouse. Yeah, it's really great seeing the amazing creations that they come up with. They come up with things that we don't even think of. When they first open the box, we don't tell them, here's the 100 steps to make this one house on the front. We show them how the pieces kind of work, how the circuit fits together, and then just give them a lot of ideas. And they come up with so many cool things. As you can see up here, we have a car wash um, on the right side, and she cut out foam and has little brushes hanging off of the motor. So when it spins, it looks like a real car wash moving. Um, and then we have a rocket ship in the middle, which was really cool because we had been trying to make a rocket ship for a while and couldn't figure it out. And then we got this video of a girl who made it, and she has a little light on the top and a motor spinning on the bottom. So it's just been really exciting seeing them be so creative. As an engineer starting a new business, what kind of challenges have you come across? Well, being a female engineer, <laughs> there are a lot of, I think one of the biggest problems is just that how surprised people seem to be when I tell them I'm an engineer. When I meet people for the first time, I kind of dread that question when they're going to ask me, well, what do you do or what are you studying? And then when I say electrical engineering, a lot of times they kind of, back off, maybe, I don't know if they're intimidated or just think I'm weird, that I like engineering, but I think <laughs> that's, that's one of the challenges and just letting girls feel that they're, it's comfortable and it's normal for them to like engineering, I think that's a really important thing. We have a, a lot of engineers in our audience today. What can men do to support and encourage women engineers in business? There are a lot of things we can do. Um, I mean, toys is really just the beginning. With Ruminate, we're really just, we just really want to expose these girls to concepts they don't get with their other toys, like playing with circuits. Um, but along with that, just seeing how technology is moving forward and how a lot of tools like 3D printers, laser cutters are becoming so affordable and accessible, I think it's really important that both boys and girls get the chance to try out those tools and just to be able to build and create with them because that really shows them how creative and how cool engineering is. And along with that, I mean, throughout their education, they're being facing a lot of obstacles. So really having role models and the support and encouragement during that whole time is so important. With role models, it's important that girls can see other females working in these areas because that really helps them picture themselves there in the future. So how can this audience get their hands on Ruminate? So we're in a lot of uh, retail stores. You can find us at Toys R Us, Walmart, um, Barnes & Nobles, Michaels. We're on Amazon, and we're also selling on our own site. Bettina, thank you for sharing with the SolidWorks community. Thank you. Thanks and for thank you for coming and hopping along to the SolidWorks world. <laughs> Bettina is truly a role model. And as part of the SolidWorks community, you are all role models for your daughters, your nieces, your sisters, your cousins, your friends, your colleagues. In the SolidWorks community, we have an opportunity not only to help women in the engineering profession, but to increase this younger, diverse talent to help your business 
and to support our future in an even larger SolidWorks community. Thank you and have a great SolidWorks world.